excited to be here, thank you. And uh, Carolyn and I understand we're the only thing standing between you and lunch, so we will stay on time. Uh, but we want to just do some quick hands real quick uh, of the facilities managers in the room. Who has a closet or a spare office or space that has extra assets in it? I've been doing this 35 years. Uh, I was talking to Mark Markley's earlier uh, as I go back to when Mark was the first president and founded the chapter, which was a very exciting time in 1985. And back in those days, you'd have a couple of spare offices and you'd keep some spare desks in it, maybe some chairs, maybe some vertical filing cabinets. But over time, as the cost of square footage has increased, we see more and more that those spaces have disappeared and uh, facilities managers are being asked to, to turn a little phone closet into somebody's private office, or literally a coat closet into somebody's private office. And so those assets need to go somewhere. Either they get liquidated and you find yourself shorthanded because human resources comes to you tomorrow and says, we just hired somebody, they're starting tomorrow, I need an office set up. Um, but these are some of the things that Blue Cross has had to deal with over the years, and certainly in terms of their scale, moving from Landmark to 101, uh, collapsing some offices really brought it to a grand scale and sort of forced their hand uh, to deal with that issue. So we want to come and, and share that, what we think is a very common problem, and share our story about how Blue Cross uh, solved that in partnership with Colonial. So with that, Carolyn. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Mnookin. I've been at Blue Cross for about uh, 10 years now. Um, it's changed quite a bit already since I've been there. But um, just to give you a little bit of background on Blue Cross itself, it's just Mass Blue Cross Massachusetts based. So um, we've been around for about 80 years and around, and during that time we've had up to 40, 45 satellite locations. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of assets and that company that go along with managing those 40 locations. So um, during that time we decided to lease a space in South Boston. Um, also during that time, we uh, part of the healthcare disengagement in the 90s. So um, we were consolidating our spaces, as Ray said, and focusing on creating larger campuses for people to be a little more productive together. So we shrunk those spaces down from 43 <coughs> or so to three main spaces. We have about uh, 35, 350,000 square feet Boston proper, a couple of satellite locations, about 700,000 on the South Shore. Um, and with that came a lot of uh, changes just to the office space itself. We were taking people out of offices, putting them into workstations, trying to maximize our space in general. <laughs> so a lot of that uh, excess product ended up at the warehouse. And you may think, we're a health insurance company, why do we need a warehouse? Most of it back in the 70s, 80s, 90s was all mail, print, copy, salespeople going around, handing you a brochure, handing you your explanations and benefits, mailing them out mailing out claims. So that was the main function of our warehouse space. So in the 90s when we really started to bring in furniture and equipment and printers and wall systems, nobody really knew how to manage it. Because again, we're a health insurance company, we don't manage furniture. So how we got here with Colonial is back in mm -hmm. August of 2018, our lease was, our lease was up, um, we were running out. Um, and we were trying to evaluate as a company whether or not we should stay or if we should go, um, whether we should invest in an asset management system for our warehouse or if we should outsource it to someone who is a subject matter expert. Um, so we toyed with a couple of ideas. Uh, the people that we have running our warehouse did not roll up to corporate real estate, they rolled up to the marketing department um, because it was mostly fulfillment and mail. So that was one of our own challenges. And as you can see, the, <laughs> this is how um, our product was stored to some dirt panels, all warped here on the left. A dirty room on top of some white furniture pieces. Um, the warehouse just wasn't equipped to store furniture. They didn't have the materials to package it, to process it, to bind it. Um, so a lot of it was really manual with us. When we had requests come in from end users, it could take up to a month because we only had two people on our team at the time, and we'd have to physically go over to the warehouse just to actually look for the product. It wasn't stored in any sort of, I couldn't say, can I have a 24 by 36 panel? They'd say, 24 wide or 24 tall? Right. And so, 
and then they could send it over damaged. They didn't know what it was. So that was one of our challenges that we faced and something that we really considered when deciding to let our lease uh, run out or to extend it. So, um, like I said, they didn't have quite proper storages. You can see all, all the arrows kind of highlight the issues just in this photo alone. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect example, we've got Coke Base in the middle there that Anybody else have skeletons in their closet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric sure all the across his dirty laundry right now. for Carolyn to share. Like, oh, I don't want people to see how bad it is. <laughs> uh, so but to their, to their credit, you know, the warehouse guys were not trained. In this. The racking wasn't there. The systems and the processes right. uh, weren't there. So we were spending thousands of hours looking for stuff. Yeah, Carolyn was like, I know that chair is there. And we would go and look and look. I saw it a month ago. Where did it go? Yeah. So yeah, we would spend a lot of time just going, it would have to be us going over there, tagging it, moving it to a place, hoping it didn't get moved again, and then making sure we could coordinate the delivery to our sites. Um, and half the time it got damaged in between doing all of that. So we really needed to streamline the process and figure out a way that we could educate ourselves, educate our, our in-house staff on how to do it. Um, you can see right there, there's a cross between marketing materials and furniture. We've got <laughs> We've got t-shirt boxes and furniture stuff all over the place. Some nice vinyl cove base. Yeah, we'll probably never be able to use it again because it's all kinked up. But So basically that led us to looking into the options for outsourcing. We met with a bunch of different vendors. We toured their facilities. We worked with them on defining our scope and what we thought we needed for our space just to kind of gain back control of our assets rather than having them in... Um, somebody's hands who wasn't quite familiar with them. So we went out to bid for a couple of different vendors and um, <coughs> that's really where we brought Colonial in once they were awarded to sort of help us define the scope and um, what we needed and the kind of turnaround times we required because I think everybody in our industry knows that when somebody asks for something, they want it yesterday, they don't really want it in two weeks. Or so, two months. Or two months. <laughs> So it was just sort of setting expectations with them, with our staff, and figuring out how we could work together to sort of come to a mutual agreement about what we needed for our spaces. Awesome. So uh, once Colonial became uh, the, the vendor to, to help them with this and came on board, we said, listen, before we start throw, throwing good money after bad, let's really take a look at what's here and come up with a plan instead of just start moving it. You know, there was certainly some pressure to get out of the warehouse. Uh, but we didn't want to spend money and time and labor to move stuff that was just going to end up being thrown away anyways. Uh, so we went through this whole assessment process. Carol and I spent many hours digging through these piles of boxes. It was a little like Davy Jones locker. Oh, I've been looking for that for six weeks. Look, we just found those Thanks duplexes. I needed those. I needed those in Hingham. <laughs> um, I'm sure you can all relate to that. But we were able to separate out what was going to move and what was going to stay. They did have a barcoding system. Uh, well, they used barcodes but I wouldn't say system because they were rarely ever scanned. So there wasn't a good database of what they actually had and didn't have. The barcodes weren't consistently placed on the product, not consistently in the same place. Um, so that was certainly one of the uh, planning uh, pieces before we started moving things, was agreeing where were the barcodes gonna go, what did they look like, how many characters were they, and establishing in our own database, uh, Snap Tracker, which is an industry standard around the country, uh, we were going to use that software, so we had to develop the database fields to accommodate their barcodes. And uh, then we had to come up with a timeline. It took us about two and a half months of slowly picking out of here, separating what was going to be left behind, what was going to the new facility. And then as it went to the new facility, it was reassessed again, looking for stains, damages, missing parts. Did it have a barcode on it? No, add it, add it to the database. And then uh, just keep building the database and collecting like items so we could consolidate. Uh, the South Boston facility was about 60, 70,000 square feet occupied in this manner. And uh, we're very pleased to share with you that we have it down to 15,000 square feet. So an order of magnitude uh, less. This is uh, what our facility looks like. Substantially different, fully racked. This is our forte, this is what we do. And there are two whole bays just dedicated to Blue Cross with uh, all of their like products sorted together. So they love it because they can come and see 
All of our chairs are in one place. All of our files are in one place. All of our dirt walls are in one place. All of our systems product is in one place. And all of that is online, electronically, that they can just go in a shopping cart experience. I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, in a couple of minutes. Next was the actual execution. After we had taken in all of the product and done an evaluation on its condition and got it loaded into the database, we went to Blue Cross and presented that database to them and said, this is what you have. Um, there was another culling process. They said, we don't need 85 vertical filing cabinets. We don't need 182 lateral files. Now that we know exactly what we have, we could keep 10. Let's you know, cut that down, cut that down, cut that and down. And every day we're still trying to cut down wherever we can. Right. Our interest is in uh, getting them to have in storage what they want to keep and what they're actually going to use. So you, you brought it in house then to your facility? We did. Yes. Yep. Blue Cross outsourced it to Colonial. The whole shebang. The whole shebang. So they got out of that, of the warehouse they had in Southie. And so now it's a variable pricing model. You know, as they use products or as they cull products out and the square footage reduces, then their monthly expense reduces as opposed to in South Boston, whether they had one thing there or 50,000 things, it was still 70,000 square feet you were paying for. So like all the infrastructure, the advertising, all that stuff was stuff we already had. They didn't have to Correct. get rid of storage or moving business. Correct. So we in inherited their system and used it. But we integrated into SnapTracker, which gives us a web-based, cloud-based portal uh, so they can um, see it in that. So these are their uh, dirt panels. This is what it looked like before. This is what it looked like after. This is what it looked like before. These were custom containers that we made to put the end trims in. Yeah, so a lot of that product that you saw there on the left-hand side, that was once their guys got to it, it was basically unusable. It had just been kinked and scratched around dented. so many times that, well, I mean, why bother storing it at that we point? We were literally to the point where we were begging Carolyn, please don't make us take the excess product to South Boston. Because we know once it went there, it was no good. Yeah, They'd ask us for it. Six <laughs> weeks later, we go, listen, we're going to tell you right now, when we go there, it'll be kicking around on the floor. Yeah. A fork truck drove over it, and you can't use it. Yeah, we had foremen sending us pictures. Just so you know, I didn't do this. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't us. Uh, so anyways, we then um, came to the point uh, where we had barcoded everything, and we did training. We went to Blue Cross, and for the real estate team, everybody in the real estate team has access to varying security levels. Uh, to the Snap Tracker software, they assign one key person. Steve is their asset manager, and so all approvals run through him. So a particular department can say, I need two chairs, I need a sofa, I need a desk lamp, whatever. That funnels to Steve, he approves it, makes sure that there's the correct department costing, and then when he clears out his shopping cart, that gets emailed to us, issues a work ticket for us internally. We go up in the racks, find those pieces. Every single item in the database has a location code, not only to the aisle, to the bay, to the level, we know exactly where it is in the warehouse. We pull those, aggregate it together, and then just coordinate with Steve uh, the particular delivery dates and times to get that out to the facilities and, and get the end users the products that they need uh, as quickly as possible. It's really easy. It's just like Click, Amazon. click, click. It's like Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and to Ray's point, we know, I think on the next slide you'll see, we know um, up there, you can see the quantity of items in stock, and it tells us exactly how many chairs we have and how many are good in fair condition, need a little bit of love. Um, and so and this is just kind of what it looks like. Search chair, and you'll come up with every single chair that we have. If you search lounge furniture, it'll come up with every piece of lounge furniture that we have. So you can search by picture. You can search by item code, which is usually how we do it. Um, another thing I want to mention is we work a lot with uh, COP and we do a lot of dirt reconfigurations and we've given our project managers on that side some access to the space so they can actually just go, cut us out of the middleman system and they can go and choose the products that they need for our reconfigurations. Um, Steve will still approve it but then it just goes straight to Colonial and they pull the product and bring it, coordinate it all for us. Awesome. Can you talk about some other benefits that you've seen in terms of your, and you, your customer? Yeah, so the turnaround time has significantly got down, gone down, which is really nice. Um, there's not so much a manual process for my team to go through and pick out things or to coordinate the um, repairs of the product, anything like that. Usually if there's a product that it comes in damaged, we'll work with them to get it repaired, cleaned. Um, 
definitely had a cost savings. You know, we were paying for 70,000 square feet that we weren't using, and now we're just paying for 15,000 square feet, <laughs> plus all of the overhead costs that go with that. So we're not paying sal hundreds of thousands of dollars in salaries and overhead costs and utilities, security, um, just extra stuff that Dumpsters, we did. Dumpsters, trucking. Dumpsters, it trucking. was a whole operation. Yeah. That and, we were um, very glad to. It's very important for Blue Cross that they put the money back into the members. And Good plug. Good plug. <laughs> um, and so reducing our real estate lowers our monthly member costs, which is obviously a benefit to a lot of people. So they really do try and take that into consideration when, especially with real estate costs, because they're so much higher. And we, 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 sorry, <laughs> we have a building in um, Copley, and you know the the real estate prices there are just astronomical. So it doesn't make sense to have storage rooms in that space when we can be maximizing it for our associates and giving them better amenities and you know nicer furniture and products like that. So it's been really nice in that sense. Um, and we kind of take control of the assets now. Before it was under marketing and we really had no say in it. So if they were like, oh, well, we're tied up with open enrollment, fulfillment, our, our needs kind of went to the bottom of the list, which was really hard and we just found we were doing way more coordination than necessary. So this puts us back in control of our own assets. Tom, I think we're a couple of minutes early. Do you mind if I take a question or two? Uh, I've got, I will first Thanks. give a, let me first give the results of the polls that you submitted. Oh, fantastic. Right, so we had, a, we had three poll questions that folks have been uh, actively reviewing. The first one was, are your excess FF&E assets being properly utilized or just archived? And 72% answered just archived. So that gives a little bit of perspective there. Mm -hmm. uh, next question was, do you have access, do you have, excuse me, excess FF&E assets that are taking up usable space? And overwhelmingly, 70% of those folks answered yes. Yeah. And then the last question was, could you improve your response time to FF&E requests by stocking? And 86% of the folks said yes on that question. Awesome. All right, I think that's all we have. Right. Unless yeah. there's a, a question from the field? I don't think they're doing questions. Awesome. Well, we, we, had, we had two <laughs> minutes to spare, so I'm, I'm using it all. All right. That's thank all you right. very much. <laughs>